In the middle of a brutal New York winter, I was living in Berkeley and working with the Berkeley Food Institute. And well, let's just say it didn't take me long to get used to being in California. There's a different farmer's market every day within striking distance of my house, and a couple I can even walk to. Not bad. And this time of year, which is early spring, wild edibles, weeds you might call them, are popping up at markets and menus and out of sidewalks all over town. And when I say all over town, I'm not kidding. On a recent urban foraging tour led by two UC Berkeley professors, I was literally pulling weeds off the street. Hey, here's some cats here, Phil. Ah, here's more of it. Whoa, look at these. There's a thousand servings here. Oh yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> Phil Stark and Tom Carlson are men on a mission. They want to raise awareness about the nutritious and, yes, organic weeds sprouting up underfoot in the middle of underserved urban neighborhoods. I was really attracted to the idea of trying to do something that would be, could have a meaningful impact on nutrition um, and well-being um, locally. Seriously? We couldn't walk half a block without stopping and eating something. We have orange peels, paint cans. Bicycle tires. Bicycle tires. And fresh food. <laughs> <laughs> Some were shockingly well, good. Totally not what I expected. This is right. so great. It's delicious. Yep. Others, well, let's say they're acquired tastes. Not my favorite, but it's not bad. It is interesting. But still, I was eating. Then we're not going to need this. <laughs> there's a lot of resistance to the idea of picking your own food out of the ground. Um, it's just there's a stigma associated with it. And so people's response is like, ick, a dog might have peed on it. Ooh, there might, who knows what. And a dog might have peed on it, but I can wash that off. It's water soluble, it's non toxic. So far, the literature and science say that we don't need to worry about these plants picking up lead or other things from the soil that would be nasty. You don't need to worry about things that are systemic in the plant. The concerns are more about what's on the plant. And so it's important to wash this stuff so that you're not ingesting what's on the leaves. Phil and Tom have developed the Berkeley Open Source Food website. There's even an app that can help anyone find, identify, and share where to forage these plants. Later in the month, Phil and Tom hosted wild tastings at local restaurants, where they included some of the bounty from local farms where weeds are increasingly seen as more than a nuisance. Bob Kennard, who farms in Sonoma County and has been one of Alice Waters' favorite farmers for decades, is a real trailblazer in the world of cultivated weeds. He even teaches workshops to other farmers about how to live harmoniously and, believe it or not, profitably with their weeds. Google this guy's name and words like shaman and guru appear. I came here in 1976. And, and it was a very disturbed piece of ground. It was a pedigree turkey ranch. And the only thing that would grow on this property were the strongest of weeds. After spending about five years working the land, Bob made a radical decision, one that's still hard for other farmers to understand. He began growing weeds primarily to feed the soil. 50% of the organic biomass that arises in a cropping cycle is, is food for people and 50% of it is food to feed the soil, and the soil is where everything comes from. You've got to have good digestion in the soil, and you need organic matter and roots and all the exudates of the plants going into the soil in order to be able to grow good soil and grow good weeds, whether they're cultivated weeds or whether they're just weedy weeds. Most um, agricultural enterprises, they have an adversarial relationship with the yeah. weeds and they kill them off. I nurture them, you know. Uh, they're, they're a very important element in building soils and we want to have more diversity, more elements that we can offer to the kitchen. And progressively, the cook kingdom has embraced it because they get a little bored cooking the same stuff all the time too. Phil, Tom, Bob, and other weed aficionados are definitely onto something. And it doesn't matter whether you pick weeds off a city sidewalk, buy them at a farmer's market, or even have them delivered. They're super tasty and mostly free or nearly so. If you learn to identify and appreciate them, your life will be enriched. And who knows, one of them could become the next kale. <laughs> <laughs>